Since Mario first defeated Donkey Kong on the arcade screen, he and his brother Luigi have been the cornerstone of the Nintendo gaming empire, from the NES all the way to the Switch. And now the time has finally come for the Italian plumbers to appropriately hit the big screen in animated form, with the voices of Chris Pratt and Charlie Day in the Super Mario Brothers movie. And while this flick is destined to get a high score at the box office from Mario fans of all ages, there are still plenty of children of the 90s who still cannot let go of the infamously failed attempt at a live-action Mario movie from 1993. Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo as the Super Mario Brothers. What can I possibly say about this movie and its infamous production that has not already been extensively covered by other YouTube channels, including the one you're watching right now? Well, to sum it up, Oscar-nominated director Roland Joffe proposed to Nintendo about producing a Mario movie. Nintendo agreed in exchange for the movie's merchandising profits. And after real-life Mario fan Harold Ramis turned down directing duties, with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Hanks being turned down for the roles of the Mario Brothers, not even kidding, Joffe would enlist Max Headroom creators Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel to bring the Mushroom Kingdom to life with a dark and gritty vision that had recently led to huge success for Tim Burton's Batman Batman and the Ninja Turtles movie. But after Disney obtained the distribution rights through their Hollywood Pictures division and demanded significant rewrites to the script, the movie's over-budget production was a living hell for its cast and crew who were abused by the egomaniacal directing duo. And the Mario movie died from a double game over of bad reviews from the critics and flopping at the box office in the same summer as Jurassic Park, leading to a bad reputation for video game adaptations in the next few decades that kept Nintendo away from live action adaptations until 2019 with Detective Pikachu. So since it was only a matter of time before I featured this movie on my show, let me put my childhood nostalgia aside to see why the original Mario Brothers movie continues to be equally despised and beloved in the 30 years since it first ba-bombed. I mean, could you Joe Blow subscribers out there imagine if this movie had done so well for Disney that they ended up buying Nintendo, thus combining all the beloved icons of our childhood into a four-headed corporate monstrosity that not even the world's military forces would be able to stop? <laughs> yeah, that would have been a dream come true. Oh no! If plumbing isn't your game, then wash down those mushrooms and have yourselves a Mario party with the awfully good drinking game. Take a double shot when the movie opens with its single usage of the iconic Mario Brothers theme song, after which we open in prehistoric Brooklyn, a time when dinosaurs ruled the earth and the animation was somehow worse than the Hotel Mario cutscenes. It just don't get no better than this. Yeah! yeah. But as Dan Castellaneta, as our New York-accented narrator explains, the meteor that supposedly killed the dinosaurs also opened up a parallel dimension where some of them would evolve into human beings. What if they found a way back? Yeah, better drop the tile card now so you can assure the kids in the audience that they have not walked into the wrong theater. Now we're in 1973 Brooklyn, as Samantha Mathis runs through the rainy streets to abandon a giant metal egg and a shiny necklace off at a church's doorstep. And while she meets her death inside a collapsing tunnel at the hands of Admiral Koopa? The church's nuns take the egg inside and watch it hatch open to reveal a newborn human baby. Don't these dumb filmmakers know that the crying baby noises don't arrive in the Mario franchise until Yoshi's Island two years from now? Finally, we're in modern day Brooklyn, where we meet the titular Mario Brothers, Mario and Luigi, played respectively by Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. He is not aged a day since this movie, but Bob Hoskins unfortunately has. The brothers are struggling to pay for their dumpy apartment, as well as the useless crap they keep buying at Spencer's Gifts, with their family-owned plumbing business. If only it weren't for the bigger plumbing business that keeps stealing all their work. Scapelli! 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 Named for its sleazy mobster boss, Anthony Scapelli, played by Carlo Rizzi from The Godfather, whose latest building is held up by an archaeological dig for dinosaur bones, led by our future princess, Daisy played again by Samantha Mathis, who's brave enough to stand up to this vicious Goomba. Not that type of Goomba, I meant the mobster Goomba! James, I'm gonna find a phone and call the university. Yeah, I'd like to dig up my bones into you, sweetie. If only I could get you in a three-way with that Ellie Satlabrod! And where Mario is usually the one who gets the princess at the end of the games, it's Luigi who ends up serving as Daisy's love interest here, as the two of them make goo-goo eyes at a payphone, while Mario prods his awkward little brother to ask her for a date. 
I overheard the name was Daisy. It's, you know, I haven't heard that name around here. It's really nice, too. What my brother is trying to say is he doesn't know what to say. Boy, you can really feel the explosive chemistry between these two. By which I mean Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. You can legitimately buy these guys as lifelong brothers, in spite of their significant differences in age and non-Italian ethnicities. Which the movie tries to awkwardly explain at a dinner date that the brothers have that night with Daisy and Mario's own girlfriend, Daniela, played by Marissa Tomei. Where Daisy discovers she's not the only one there who grew up as an abandoned orphan. You don't know who your mother and your father are neither? Mario here brought me up. My father, he's been my father, my <laughs> uncle, my brother, everybody. Look, if we were able to buy Bradley Cooper and Sam Elliott as brothers in A Star Is Born, then there's no reason this movie had to go out of its way to make Mario and Luigi the Super Mario father and adopted son. What's next? A Street Fighter movie that doesn't have any street fighting in it? Of course! But on the trail of our two lovebirds are the bumbling Koopa cousins who've been kidnapping a series of young women off the Brooklyn streets. Iggy and Spike, played by Fisher Stevens and Richard Edson, looking like the rejected members of Color Me Bad who track the Mario brothers down into Daisy's dig site, where they knock the Marios over the head, then snatch up Princess Daisy to take her to another castle. Another dimension, you mean? Or sorry, I meant another dimension, which Mario and Luigi find a magical portal to inside of this cave. Going broke, Mario. We're already there. Now, would it have been far cheaper to just film them hopping down a giant green pipe? Probably so. But how else are we going to showcase this cutting-edge computer animation to help Bob Hoskins star in his own remake of Overdrawn at the Memory Bank? Where's Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse with a spare parachute when you need them? And so we finally arrive in our reimagining of the Mushroom Kingdom, which has gone from a colorful land of blue skies and cute creatures into the dark dystopian dimension of Dino Hatton. Get it because they're dinosaurs instead of men? Dino Man? Ha ha ha! Where the brothers chase after the kidnapped Daisy inside an enormously impressive set from the same production designer who gave us Blade Runner. I don't know, maybe we got knocked unconscious for a hundred years and we woke up in Manhattan of the future. Maybe the Bronx is the day. This is a world where the dino evolved humans carry eggs around in baby carriages while donning Mike Tyson face tattoos. Where more keys for triple X pornos somehow end up in a PG rated family movie. And where seemingly nice grannies can pull a taser gun on you out of nowhere. Get him up, sucker! <laughs> who should run this hellhole but the dino dictator who's better known nowadays as Bowser, but who's known here as King Koopa, played by the late great Dennis Hopper, whose evil plot in coordination with his girlfriend Lena, played by a pre and or Fiona Shaw, is to have his cousins bring Daisy back into the dino dimension and obtain the meteorite piece that hangs around her neck, which will be referred to 80 million times in this movie. Where's the rock? Where's the rock? Where is that meteorite piece? Without that piece, I'll not be able to merge the dimensions and get rid of the mammals. The plumbers took it. And so Koopa puts out a search for these two plumbers. I'll kill that plumber! Whom his police force soon find alongside an anti-Koopa street singer named Toad. Yes, that's really supposed to be Toad. Ah! Ah, whoa, 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 whoa. Played here by rockabilly musician Mojo Nixon, after the film couldn't afford to cast Tom Waits. Yes, Tom Waits was really supposed to be Toad. Name. Mario. Last name. Mario. What's your name? Luigi. Luigi Mario. Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Well, there you have it, folks. The one aspect of this movie that Shigeru Miyamoto did not end up disavowing in shame. Are we dead? Koopa violently interrogates the plumbers over where the rock is before he sends them off to the Devo chamber. Koopa! You're a lousy leader! Where poor Toad is punished for his crimes by having his brain de-evolved into one of Koopa's mindless, tiny-headed henchmen, known collectively as the Goombas. Goomba. <laughs> Oil. Lethal. Stupid. Instead of looking like mushrooms, the Goombas here look like they're high on mushrooms. I guess that's close enough. Go Goomba! While the chaos and noise of this movie can tend to overwhelm you, I applaud all the effort on these practical effects and real explosions that you rarely see in today's era of CGI, as this chase scene with the cops feels less like Mario Kart and more like Mad Max. Yeah! 
This is drive! Glug, 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 Coincidentally, it was going glug, glug, glug that helped Hoskins and Leguizamo get through the nightmare of this movie's production. But neither of them compare to the rage that Dennis Hopper unleashed on this movie set in a two-hour rant. After the movie's constant rewrites extended his planned five weeks of production into 17 weeks. Must have been a bad couple of weeks. Hopper masterfully hams it up here as our Corn Road King Koopa, now running Iggy and Spike through his Devo chamber to upgrade their brains so that they can find the two plumbers while also talking smart like the goofy gophers on Looney Tunes. A not so benevolent dictator, as it were. Perhaps we should stay and formulate our own strategy, tete a tete. If only he could do the same for their haircuts. But then again, look at Koopa. His hair looks like if Trump fucked a lemon meringue pie. <laughs> While his sleazy performance trying to hit on Princess Daisy is one oxygen mask away from going into full-on blue velvet territory. You must be the great Koopa. Oh, oh mommy. <sighs> mommy. Baby wants to fuck. Uh... I'll fuck anything that moves. I'll never forget the first time they kissed by a lizard. Don't you fucking look at me! Don't you fucking look at me! Goomba! You are so fucking suave. Where's the fucking beer, man? Paps Blue Ribbon! Now back to our plumbers out in the Koopahari Desert, where they hold up the bumbling Koopa cousins to squeeze some plot exposition out of them. And over the rack. Someone took it. That lady with the red spikes who mugged us. Big Bertha! The bounce at the boom boom bar! Yes, Big Bertha, the previously seen black woman who threw that granny over the ledge and stole Daisy's necklace, has gone from being a giant fish in Mario 3 to being reimagined here as the bouncer of the boom boom bar who has big boobs. I'm your main man. Dance with me. I gotta admit though, Bob Hoskins' charm as an actor really helps keep this movie afloat, as he seduces the rock necklace out from Bertha on the dance floor. He even gets to twerk his plunger up into her toilet and motorboats her boobs. Go Maya! In a PG rated movie that also happened to hire real strippers to be extras in this club scene. Fun bags for the whole family. Then Lena barges in with the Goomba Troopas to the tune of George Clinton's cover of Walk the Dinosaur. Which for years I thought was an original song explicitly written for this movie. And after Bertha kisses Mario to the tune of the Come on, what? there's no time for that now. Hollywood Pictures theme? She helps the Marios get away by using her rocket boots, which she stole from the set of Face Off. Look, we had to force in some reference to Mario's iconic jumping ability, so it was either having him wear these clunky metal boots, or having to ask Oscar-nominated Shakespearean actor Bob Hoskins if he's okay with wearing a raccoon suit. I used to play King Leah. And he's only gonna do that when he's forced to promote this movie on The Kelly Clarkson Show. You look awesome! Shut up! While all these easter egg references to other Mario villains are admittedly clever, the most baffling creative decision is this movie's complete focus on the dinosaur theme, which had only been recently introduced in one level of Super Mario World. For instance, Mario's loyal dino sidekick Yoshi is seen here as a realistic and impressive looking animatronic dinosaur, who serves as Koopa's pet. Yoshi is the pet of the royal family. Although he serves little purpose other than giving Frank Welker another creature to voice in this movie and helping Daisy flee from captivity by breaking out his signature long tongue. Only for Lena to brutally stab Yoshi and leave him for dead. For the children! As for the mushroom theme we usually associate with Mario Brothers, they represent that here in the form of the rubbery fungus which is consuming the streets of Dino Hatton and keeps saving Mario and Luigi from danger all throughout the movie. And then this giant booger caught us in there, that's what saved us. That's because this fungus happens to be the former king of Dino Hatton, who was overthrown and de-evolved by Koopa into the slime bucket that you see before you. Trust the fungus. Trust the fungus. Thank you for all your help. Finger Cross that fungus starts infecting people and turning them into zombies, thus leading to the events of a far better video game adaptation. Wow! And 66 minutes later into this film, we finally get to see Mario and Luigi suit up in their iconic red and green overalls. But still no mustache on top of John Leguizamo's lip, so they can save Daisy and the Brooklyn girls from Koopa's castle, which just so happens to resemble the desiccated ruins of the World Trade Center. Look! Uh... Uh, hey, look! 
Look, Mario and Luigi are leading the Goombas into a silly dance. This scene certainly didn't predict any national tragedies, unless you count Dancing with the Stars as a national tragedy. And I do. But just as Mario manages to escape with the rest of the real housewives of Dino Hatton over here, Koopa catches up with the Marios and puts a stop to their escape plans. <laughs> and Dennis Hopper's frustration with this movie finally boils over into him trying to angrily destroy the set like he did in Texas Chainsaw 2. I'm bringing it down! Down, down! Meanwhile, Luigi and Daisy run off to stop Koopa's girlfriend from taking the rock and merging the dimensions for herself which ends up killing off Fiona Shaw and reincarnates her into a far worse video game movie. Man, she still makes an impression. Yeah, if you thought that was unfunny, just wait until you see him in The Pest. Yo, what's up, freak? As for Mario, he pulls out the one weapon from the games that actually resembles the way it did in the games. The bomb! The bomb! And since this bomb is gonna take a while to go off, we might as well have Mario and Koopa snapped out of existence by Thanos to end up inside of our dimension, where Koopa uses his Devo gun to turn Anthony Scapelli into a... Oh, what do you call these things again? Monkey! Ah, yes. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. Boy, if this is supposed to be the movie's take on Donkey Kong, then they have really cheaped out on the effects. But it's back to Dino Hat and we go, where Mario and Luigi take on Koopa together by firing his Devo guns, which are actually just repainted Nintendo Super Scopes. Only for Super Nintendo. Now you're playing with product placement. The bob blows Koopa to the sky, the Marios set their guns to fry, and from dinosaur to diarrhea, does King Koopa go bye-bye. Haha, <laughs> but seriously, these effects look literally like shit. It does look like shit. So the Mushroom Kingdom is free once again. The Mario Brothers fly in victory above the extras, who are celebrating no longer having to film in 90 degree summer temperatures. And the King has re-evolved back to his original form of Lance Henriksen in a pointless cameo. I'm back. Love those plumbers. Uh, no, Lance, the line is supposed to be, Oh, thank heavens, I'm back to my old self again. I don't care, give me my money and let me go home. And after Luigi bids farewell to Princess Daisy before he ever got to do any laundry or taxes with her, we fast forward three weeks later to find out that the Mario Brothers' adventures have even made it onto the news. I'd call them the Super Mario Brothers. Aw, uh, damn it! I thought he was gonna call them the Bonanza Brothers. Then Daisy busts through the door dressed like Ripley from Aliens, setting up the sequel that is totally gonna happen. Super Mario Brothers! No, of course it didn't happen. Both Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel would be blacklisted from Hollywood over this movie's failure. Both Bob Hoskins and Dennis Hopper would call it the worst project of either of their careers, and Mario fans would never find out if Steve Buscemi would have landed the role of Wart in the Mario Brothers sequel. But we do get a meta and credit singer that features the prototypes for the We Would Like to Play guys, proposing a video game adaptation for the adventures of Iggy and Spike? The Super Koopa Cousins! Okay then, they should have gone with the far better stinger idea of having Mario twerk with Megan the Stallion. Ha ha ha! Now this is twerking! Yet while this movie never got a sequel, it did get itself a dedicated fan base over the years, with longtime fan Ryan Haas establishing the Super Mario Bros. movie archive in 2007, which has collected every single bit of memorabilia, leftover props, lost footage, and concept art that they can find with even John Leguizamo recording a video for them on the movie's 20th anniversary. And after the fan site's founders worked on a sequel webcomic co-written by original Mario co-writer Parker Bennett in 2013, 2021 saw the SMB archive working in coordination with film restorationist Garrett Gilchrist to create the two-hour Morton Jenkel cut, thanks to an unfinished work print of the movie on VHS, which you all owe it to yourself to watch on the internet archive. This extended version has a treasure trove of deleted scenes, which provides some much needed explanation beyond whether or not Koopa finally got his pizza. Where's my pizza? I hate this! No! No! For example, the unexplained slime pile in front of that Devo chamber was actually an insolent security guard that Koopa de-evolved into primordial ooze. Oh my god! What does it smell like? Fantastic. 
The deleted arguments between Mario and Luigi help explain why Luigi is instantly avoiding growing a mustache like the Mario brothers before him. Daniela watching the Knicks. You hate the Knicks! I love them now! The wacky Alan Silvestri score that sounds more like Roger Rabbit than Mario Brothers is largely muted out of the extended cut and replaced with some actual music from the Mario games. Whoa! Cool! And in one of the greatest scenes I have seen in my near decade of bad movie reviews, Iggy and Spike flex their newfound intelligence with a goddamned rap number. When we met two plumbers who had an idea, they showed us the lake and the new frontier. Mario and Luigi, they know what's right. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Koopa! The, the party poopa! The poopa scoopa! You fuck! You fucker sucker! Oh, come on! Turn it off! I now owe an apology to Porky Pig for dissing his Space Jam 2 rap, because this is right up there in terms of cringe. The editor of this movie deserved an Oscar simply for leaving this scene out of the final cut. And they really thought that this woman's costume was gonna make it into a PG rated movie released through the Disney Corporation? Even though the movie's constant rewrites and pick and choose approach to adapting the Mario games leads to a totally confused mess that tries forcing Disney slapstick inside of a cyberpunk nightmare world, it's still just so fascinating and entertaining to watch the many ways in which it fails upwards. Much like another childhood favorite of mine, Nothing But Trouble. Revisiting this movie is just as fun as revisiting the original games, especially if you watch the 2014 Rift Tracks version, which I count among my all-time favorite riffs from those guys. Get a lawyer and get us out of this chicken coop! I like Mario better when he wasn't a sputtering balloon of rage. Even Shigeru Miyamoto himself has complimented the movie as a very fun project that they put a lot of effort into. And while neither Disney or Nintendo are willing to help the movie see an American Blu-ray or streaming release, there are still plenty of ways online that you can watch this enduring masterpiece of awfully goodness. So my thanks to the SMB archive and the gaming historian in particular for their roles in my research. And congratulations to Luigi Mario himself for recently hosting The Daily Show, when a truly monumental event in history happened to go down. <laughs> yes! Oh yeah! Super Luigi! Zoom zoom! On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Bull to Bruce, Super Mario Bros. The Movie proves that Chris Pratt indeed has some big overalls to fill, and trusts the fungus to walk the dinosaur to a 9 out of 10. It's still easier to sit through this movie than it is to play the lost levels. <laughs> Hey, no! No! I'm Jesse Schaefer, JoeBlow.com, and thanks again for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the Joe Blow Originals channel. Tell all your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We are an independent company that appreciates all of your support. And of course, we dedicate this video in loving memory of Dennis Hopper, Bob Hoskins, and the man who paved the way for Mario actors everywhere, Captain Lou Albano. If you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Please. Koopa! The party Koopa! The Poopa Koopa! Shit's a crying shame! We're playing his game, he's got us so tame, it really is lame! And we're all so dumb being under his thumb. Be proud reptilians, we number in the millions! When you get your rock. When I get the princess. Princess? I need the rock.